eruptions of the knowing fields, like you notice them day to day. I just was wondering if you had a couple of examples. Well, that happens for everybody, <clears throat> but most of us don't notice it. So what you described as what, what Melissa mentioned as synchronicity would be an example. Um, it happens a lot, and the more you learn to see it happen, the more it seems to happen. But an example might be going to the store without realizing really why you're going. But you get there, you do it anyway, and it seems to have a life of its own. You just go to the store um, and you run into someone you really need to run into. And you may, maybe that was the reason you went to the store. It wasn't to get sugar or whatever. Um, although once you're there, you might realize, oh, I need something. But you didn't go for a logical reason. You went because you were just moved to go. And if you stopped and noticed it, you would think, Chad, and somebody said, well, why are you going to the store again? You'd say, I don't know. I really don't. I'm just going. Um, but the movement was to go. And that movement came from someplace other than you, other than your thinking mind. Because the thinking mind didn't need to go. It didn't have a list. You know, it just went. Um, and that's the experience of the no mind moving through the body and the world is stuff just happens. And it's not hard, it's not difficult, it's, um, it happens of its own. The clear feeling of it is you're not doing it. You notice that your body got in the car and went to the store, but there's not a sense of uh, will about it or agency. It just happens. And speaking can be the same way. You can just speak out of no mind. You, and usually when you are, some of the characteristics of this no mind moving through the body are that whatever you say or do out of that is powerful, direct, and effective. And usually way more skillful than normally you would be able to pull off. And if you think back in your past, we've all had experiences like this, but we don't they happen in this sort of timeless space, so it's often not noticed by the thinking mind or the ego. So, but you know, everyone has had experiences like this, and really we all have experiences like this every day. It's just a notion in our head that there's someone in here who's in charge and is making sensible decisions. That's really not seen to be actually true. So it's like when you hear yourself saying something and you notice the effect of it is powerful and direct, but you also realize you didn't think about it, it just came out. Uh, or the same thing with doing. You just know. I'll give you one quick example. This happened, you know, when I, once I began to recognize how these things operate, I had many memories of moments in my life where before I had any sense of awakening or anything else, these things occurred. So here, here's an example of, you know, probably 30 years ago, 35 years ago, I can remember how old my son is, because he's 40, and he was seven, so or eight. So he uh, went home from school with a friend of his from first or second grade, and they could walk home from this neighborhood school. And it was my job to pick him up after he spent some time playing at this child's house, and I was actually, at that, that time I was actually meditating quite a lot. And I was sitting in meditation in my house, and I had suddenly had this clear sense, go get him. It was just clear as a bell, go get him. So I just got up and went to get him. And <clears throat> so when I'm, I'm arriving, I'm pulling out my car, <clears throat> he's walking down the driveway. And another few feet, he would have hit the sidewalk and he didn't know which way to go to go home because you know the only reason he knew how to get to this child's house is he went with the boy after school well what had happened was the boy's mother who had an issue with anger got mad at her son and told him he couldn't play anymore with my son my son had to go home so my son dutifully left the house walking down this driveway and right before he would have hit the sidewalk and probably freaked out because at that moment he didn't know where to go I showed up in my car, and you know, 
he didn't even know it. There was no discomfort, no nothing. He just got in like, of course my dad's there. <laughs> 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 you know, so to me that's an example, but I just knew. And how, you could say, well, how did you know? Well, I suppose there may be some kind of explanation, but the truth is, I don't know. I just knew. But I knew enough to trust the knowing and act on it without thinking. I didn't second guess. I didn't say, that's just kind of stupid. It's a waste of my time. Why would I go? I mean, he's going to call me. He hasn't called. No, there was absolutely no doubt in it. It was just the going was acting out of no mind. The knowing was knowing out of no mind. Um, another example with my younger son, who's 24, he was, we were at a friend's house, he was playing with a boy, he was, he was three, this child was seven. Um, I knew this boy had an issue of jealousy with my son because they had the same caretaker and he was competitive. And so he's up on, we're, at, we're standing by his house and it's a driveway that's paved that goes downhill. The seven-year-old boy's on his bicycle and I just, and my wife and my caretaker is standing beside me. And I looked up and I saw this child and I knew he was going to try to run over my boy. I just knew it instantly. And so I stepped up and sort of beside my child and in front of him. And I just watched, I, and I was looking at these two who were totally oblivious, completely unconscious, just having a big talk about something. And then this boy starts down the hill, picks up speed, is really racing down the hill, and gets to maybe this far in front of my son with his front wheel. And I go, and I just grab the front handlebars, and he stops on a dime. He doesn't go anywhere. He just stops dead, and he gets off and uh, rides off. And that, and it's like nobody even saw it. Like nobody noticed what happened, because the whole thing was in this no mind. Um, I acted freely out of no mind. Is the way I would describe it. And it wasn't thinking. It's not like I thought, I'll wait till he gets four inches away before I stop it. <laughs> it's just I knew that's when you do it. So and then the knowing was not conscious. It was automatic and intuitive. It's just, but in the action was forceful. And like nobody got hurt. Nobody even noticed. So he pedals off and I looked at my wife and the caretaker. I said, did you see what just happened? <laughs> no, what happened? <laughs> you really, uh, it's interesting. But if you're in the thinking mind, you won't see it because it happens in another space, a space of timeless emptiness. But you can learn to see these things, and it's valuable to learn to see them. Now, these happened long before I had any clue about any of this. So I think stuff like that goes on in everyone's life. Um, you know, and, and I encourage you to try to remember moments in your life when you just did something or said something or knew something that you would have no real way of knowing that makes any sense. And yet you knew and you were right. And when you trust that knowing and act on it, it always goes well. It's always powerful, effective, skillful, and at a level that's way beyond anything you could reasonably expect yourself to do, you know? Um, I'll give you one more quick example. This was, um, <coughs> we used to live on the west side and we could walk to Rec Park. And this was when the, um, the bike races were on one Saturday. I knew they were on. And I took my son and I said, let's go to the, let's go to the bike race. Let's go, and we're just gonna walk up there. They have this big professional bike race around Rec Park. It's like, a, has big prize money, it's a big deal. Um, it's called the Theater <coughs> Memorial or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's been going on three or four or five years. And I just knew to go then. I don't know why, I just knew to go. That's when we need to go, so let's go. And he was willing, so we walked up there. And it's, a, it's probably a 10 to 15 minute walk, and then I had this sense, I really need to be there. 
So as we're walking up, um, and it's packed with people, on line because we're right at the finish line, and as the, the peloton or this this main group of riders comes by, uh, just as we step, I, I step right onto the edge of the of the road. There's this gigantic crash, and bicycles go 30 feet in the air, and riders go 20 feet, and um, they land right in front of me. I mean, like from me to you, um, and two of them look really badly injured to me. Uh, I'm not a physician, but I mean, one guy's eyes were going like this, and his arm was, you know, way bent underneath his body, and. Um, and the other one, I had a clear sense either of them could die. But I also, I just started talking to them in my mind. You're okay, help is on the way. And the, there's like 10 ambulances and 20 EMTs right across the street for reasons that are unknown to me. I guess it's maybe in a timeless zone. Nobody's coming and nobody's doing anything. And I'm, but I'm intently, and I knew not to say it out loud, I just intently talk to these people in my mind and mm -hmm. finally it seemed like 10 minutes I'm sure it was like one minute but the sense of timelessness was very powerful <coughs> uh, the EMTs show up um, and you know I so I, I was able to for a variety of reasons find out that the disposition it turned out only two were hospitalized and they were released the next day. Both had concussions and broken bones, but they were okay. So, I don't know what that's about. I, I, maybe that's, I don't know what that is. But I just knew I needed to be there and I knew the exact time that I needed to be there. And literally the moment I stepped, I got there, you know, all hell breaks loose. Um, many examples like that I could give you. That was a long time ago. That was probably at least 15 years ago. But you know, it's like, or just saying, just saying something that, you know, maybe you know you really wouldn't say because it's so direct and real and honest. Um, but when you say it, nobody gets offended. And you know, teaching. Whenever I teach, I'm talking out of that continuously. So an example, here's another quick example. It's like I was teaching at BCC, I was giving evening classes. When I first started trying to convey this stuff locally, I would give these little uh, adult education courses at Broome Community College. And I gave a lot of them, over three years, and something like 10 or more courses, mainly around anything to do with like Eckhart and Tolle and the Power of Now, or something that, and I, and I had the biggest audiences they had there. There's, there's this whole, school and more people would come to my things than anybody but I remember I was giving this talk on the lack of value of taking your own thoughts seriously I mean how completely useless that is but harmful and I had this woman and so the public is there these aren't people that I've screened or educated or nothing this is just ordinary folks who show up and so I had this woman, it looked to me maybe 70, raise her hand, she says, well, Dr. Hall, how do I know that if my thoughts are meaningless? And I looked right at her and I said, well, if you're thinking them, they're meaningless. It's like, I just blurt that out of no mind. <laughs> and she, you could see her just go like that. I call that stopping the mind. I didn't know what that was until I saw it happen over and over again. Uh, but when you speak that directly and forcefully out of no mind, it has the effect of just stopping the other person's, whatever they're doing, it just seizes the mind. And as soon as I said that, the thinking mind kicked in, because it wasn't totally silent at that point, and said, I don't think you should be saying that to yeah. someone you don't know. Um, I mean, what if she, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I just, you know, I just thought, well, okay, whatever. It. And, but you know, if I, and then there was never any reaction. I mean, that's just the truth. If you're thinking it, it's meaningless. But, in other words, the stuff that you say or do that comes from nowhere, it's always fine. 
the results are always powerful, effective, and not a problem, strangely enough.